It's about time Kafka let that inner Kaiju loose. So today we're going to be talking about chapter 111 of Kaiju number 8. It's about time, man. We all been waiting for it. We knew it was coming. We knew it was going to come. What's coming? It's about time Kafka let that inner Kaiju loose. We knew he had this berserker mode because we saw it against Isao Shinomiya, the general, way back. I can't remember what chapter, but we knew that there was a mode that he could go where he just kind of went wild. To me, it's kind of reminiscent of Naruto when he first couldn't control Kurama and Kurama was just letting his chakra loose. That inner monster was just going wild. But in chapter 111, apparently Kafka can control it for a certain amount of time. Let's just go over it. So we start off with a little flashback. It looks like Kafka's asking Gen to help him out with the secret training, which is kind of cool because we all know that Gen is a super prodigy, hella strong, and pretty much if anyone's going to help him out with that training, it's got to be him. Because who can handle him if Kafka just runs wild and he just goes loose and has zero control? Who can put him down? Got to be this dude, right? Kafka is basically telling Gen, yo, dude, I need your help, man. This is kind of my ace in the hole. And the captain is just letting him know, like, yo, you might not be able to go back to human. Are you cool with that? You know, this is why I like Kafka. I like that he's just willing to go all in, just balls deep. He's going to go into it. He knows that he might not be able to turn back to a human if he keeps doing this transformation. But he wants to train, do this training with this captain, knowing full well that each time he does it, he might not be able to go back. Is that dedication or what? Is, it, is that commitment? I love that out of him. Let's fast forward back into the present time. Kafka's like, dude, I can control this for one minute. Back me up. Now, this is pretty cool to me because Kafka's asking for backup instead of him being the backup. This whole time, up until this point, he's pretty much just been the supporting character of Mina. You know what I'm saying? It's always like he was trying to catch up to her level. But now he's finally flipping it around and it's like, yo, you support me. Now, obviously, this is a teamwork type of thing. It's not about who's better, who's stronger. It's more so about who's taking the lead in this particular battle. But I do think it was just kind of a cool line. Now, during this battle, Kafka's saying, I got two techniques left in reserve. Because pretty much, if you remember, the dude can only use techniques that Kaji number nine is unaware about. So pretty much this is going to be those variants, right? To me, like when I read that panel, I knew, oh crap, look, this battle is going to be over either this chapter or the next, most likely the next chapter. Because if you only got two techniques left, he's probably going to finish it on the last technique. He's probably going to try one here and it probably ain't going to work, right? Now, the next page, I think we get something pretty significant. These two are battling it out, Kaiju number eight and Kaiju number nine. But Kaiju number nine is like, dude, number eight, you were that sort of being all along? I was like, yo, what do you mean by that? I think he's just simply referring to the fact that Kaiju number eight was designed to fight and kill other Kaijus. Now, when he's saying that you were that sort of being all along, I'm like, hold up. Does this mean there's a species of kaiju, like a subspecies, that are just meant to fight other kaijus? Or is it just kaiju number eight only? I'm kind of thinking that there might be others like him. There might be others like that little flying kaiju that entered Kafka. It's a possibility. Because why would he say you're that sort of being as if, I don't think it just means singular, like you're just one only being like that. I think there are multiple beings that are like that. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. But you know, another thing it could mean, it could mean that Kaji number nine is like, dude, maybe you were built in a lab. Maybe you were that sort of being, meaning that he wasn't a subspecies of a Kaiju. Maybe Kafka was purposely designed to become a Kaiju killing Kaiju. Now, if this is the case, I think that's probably what the next arc is going to be about. It's probably going to be about Kafka's origin or not, maybe not Kafka's origin, but the flying Kaiju's origin. Now the chapter ends with Mina finally getting her main weapon. You can see that she destroyed Kaiju number 14. Dude got blasted out of the sky and it was just wrecked. Now that Mina got her main weapon, I think it's pretty clear that this arc is probably coming to a close or at least this battle is. Now I gotta say, I think Kaiju number eight is doing something good with the manga. What they're doing right, in my opinion, is they're, they're doing pacing right. There are so many battles shown in out there where they just drag out some fights. I like how they're just kind of getting to the point here. I like how it's not dragging on forever. It's not like we're waiting for the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So good stuff there. Keep on the lookout for the review and recap of chapter 112. See y'all again soon. Peace.